this is Miss Jody from the Fireland Symphony Orchestra and today we're going to talk about rain sticks and I'm going to show you how to make your own rain stick. It's very exciting. Now a rain stick is a musical instrument but what family does this instrument fit with? Well we talked about how there are four musical families, right? Four different houses that our musical instruments fit into. So is a rain stick part of the woodwinds? No. Is it part of the brass family? No. Would it be part of the string family? I don't think so. So it must be part of the percussion instruments. That's what family it fits in. Because when we make sound with a rain stick, it makes sound by either striking or scraping to make that vibration happen, to make that sound. It's similar to a shaker because it has a container and it has striking devices inside of it. So that's what makes it part of the percussion family. Now you may think, where did rain sticks even come from? There are some people that argue about where this started and where it came from. Uh, they have found some uh, evidence in ancient times of something called a tubular rattle. And if you look, this rain stick is like a tube and it's got rattly stuff inside of it. So it could have come back from all the way back in ancient times. We know that in more recent times, the rain stick has been used in North America, South America, in Africa, Australia, all over the world. And we know that these rain sticks have been used for rituals and ceremonies with all kinds of indigenous people from those places. And it was to summon the rain. Rain is very important for us to grow food and keep everything alive in our world. So people were very excited about making sure they called for the rain and they used these rain sticks to help that happen. They also use it as a soothing method. It's a very calming sound when you hear the rain sticks. Now, what are rain sticks made from? Well, there's a lot of different things that a rain stick could be made from. Depending on where you are, you would be using materials that are in your area. So if you were to make a rain stick, let's say in China or in Australia, you might use a bamboo reed, a really long bamboo stick that has a hollow center to it. But if you're maybe in North America or South America, you might use one that looks more like this. This is part of a cactus. You can hear a little bit of it right there. Do you know what a cactus is? It's one of those green plants that grows in the desert. It has all those thorns that stick out from it. Well, this is the arm of a cactus. And once it dries out, they take those thorns and they make sure to push them in. So inside this tube are all these levels of thorns inside. And when they put extra stuff inside there, like small rocks or nutshells or berries that are dried out or beads, when they do that and they close the end, this is the sound it makes. Sounds like rain or a waterfall. And it goes for a long time. But notice how I play it. All I have to do is hold it up. I don't have to shake it or do anything crazy with it. We just hear those sounds of the inside striking devices trickling past all those thorns that are inside. This rain stick that I have was made out of a piece of wood that is hollowed out and it has all kinds of thorns pushed in it as well. There's also some that are used with nails that stick inside. We also have some rain sticks that are decorated. This one has wonderful tree frogs that are painted on it and it has a little bit of a lighter sound to it. Now, I was thinking it would be so fun to make our own rain stick. Now, there's some materials that you're gonna need. You need some kind of tube that's hollow inside. Now, I started by getting four toilet paper rolls, those cardboard roll inside. Now I need to tell you kids, do not go in your bathroom and unroll all the toilet paper just to get the cardboard tube inside. I guarantee your parents will be unhappy with you. Just wait till the roll finishes 
and then ask your parents to save it for you. I took four of them and I put them together and I taped them together with some with some regular uh, clear tape. And then I was also thinking you could use a paper towel tube once the paper towels are done. But I also found out that you could use a wrapping paper tube and I found out that I had one of those. Now you can decorate your tube. I put some stickers on this one and I put some decorative tape and some colorful marker on this one so that mine would look like special just for me. Now, once we do that, one of the things we need that's very important inside is pipe cleaners. Now, this is what normal pipe cleaners look like. They're kind of fuzzy and long. And they're usually, they usually come in a package that are straight. My cat likes to take these out and play with them at my house. So they get bent because she likes to take them all around. So when we find some pipe cleaners, what we want to do is we want to take them and make spirals out of them. We make spirals out of them. And the way I do that, the easiest way, is I hold it between my fingers and wrap it around two fingers. And then when I pull it off, it's kind of a spiral. If you need a spiral that's a little bit smaller, you could just use one finger. And then you have a spiral that's much smaller. So once we do that, we want to stick those spirals into our tube, just like this. And I put some in one side and I put some in the other. Sometimes I feel like they don't go down far enough. So I get my spoon and I push them down toward the middle. That way I have more room on the end. We want to make sure we fill it up but not too, too tight. So this amount of space, I used six pipe cleaners. You don't need to use that many, or you could use more, but make sure there's room for things to travel down the tube. Don't make it too crowded so that there's no way for it to trickle. The next important thing is to have a stopper at the end. Now, if you don't have anything else, you could just use paper push it all around and then you find a rubber band so that you can secure it on the end. This is very important to be the next step so that one of the ends is closed up. So you can see that that is all closed up. Then we take our tube and tilt it this way and we will add some kind of material. Now let me show you some of the materials that I have here. I have some pieces of straw, a plastic straw. In case you can't find any other materials, you could cut them up into very small pieces. My favorite material to use is rice, just like we did for the shaker. I like the sound it makes when it hits the side of the tube. I think it makes a nice trickly sound that sounds just like the rain. I also found some little plastic beads. Some beads that are bigger than this, they actually have a hard time getting past the pipe cleaners inside. So you want to be careful to pick something very, very small. Some of you may be thinking, well, Miss Jody, uh, I, again, I, I don't have any of that materials at home. So I ask you to maybe go outside and try to find something. In our shaker video, we use some sticks and some pine needles. Those would be two good things, as long as you break your sticks into really small pieces. I also went back outside and found some very small rocks. Not the big ones, they'll have a hard time getting past those pipe cleaners again. So you want to make sure you use the very small rocks. So I'm going to complete uh, my, my big rain stick. I, I really like the way this one sounds a lot. This one we can finish. All we have to do is put the rice in and cover up the end again. On my long one, I will show you that I had some fun shaped foam pieces. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to cover up the end. I'm going to make sure to wrap it with a rubber band so that none of my pieces come out. Then I'm going to go ahead and take my rice. I found it easier to use a bag because then it feels like most of the rice will get in there. I know this because I tried it with other things like a plastic container and a lot of my rice went on the floor. We don't really want to put our rice on the floor. 
Once you're able to get all the rice in there or whatever your striking device is, we have to close the other end. Because if we tip it over now, what's going to happen? Yes, everything will fall out onto the floor and then we will have made a mess. So we go ahead and cover this end. We secure it with a rubber band and then we give it a test. Can you hear that? We've made a rain shaker, a rain stick. It has a great sound to it, nice and soothing. And I think you'll have a lot of fun with trying out different materials inside your rain stick to see what those different things sound like. You could even do a, a name that item test for some of your family at home, fill it with different items and see if they can identify what you've put inside of that rain stick. Now, Miss Jody's Mad Jams! Now, at the end of each of my videos, I like to give you some Miss Jody's Mad Jams song suggestions for you to listen to. These songs are for you to have fun with, to dance to, one of my recommendations is for you to make a video of you dancing to that song. Maybe you want to use some costumes this time. Maybe you want to use some instruments like a homemade microphone or a homemade guitar or maybe your rain stick. So the first song that I want you to look up is Celebration by Cool and the Gang. And that one is a super one to dance to. Now, you might be thinking, well, what are we celebrating, Miss Jody? We can celebrate that we're all together making music and making instruments and having a good time with music. The second one I want you to listen to is called Can't Buy Me Love from none other than The Beatles. <sighs> Love The Beatles. And the last one, because it features a percussion instrument, I'm going to let you guess what it is once you listen to it, the song is called Wipeout by the Surfaris. And I think you're going to have a great time listening to that song as well. You might need to get out your pencils and do a little drumming with that song. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a great time making instruments. And I want you to tune in again. You can find me at firelandssymphony.com. That's a double S in the middle, firelandssymphony.com. You can also find us if you search Facebook and find the Fireland Symphony Orchestra. Tune in again for more of Miss Jody's music lessons. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.